everyone. Welcome back to Ash Dev. In this part, we'll add visual and sound effects. We'll cover how to implement bullet trails, hit surface effects, muzzle flashes, and fire sound effects, making your shooting mechanics more immersive and dynamic. If you're learning something new from this series, please give us a like and subscribe to our channel. It really motivates us to create more valuable content for you. Now, let's start the tutorial. First, let's add bullet trails. In the Gun Data class, create a game object named Bullet Trail Prefab and a float named Bullet Speed, which will be the speed at which the bullet trail moves. In the Gun class, create a transform variable Gun Muzzle to serve as the point from which the bullet trail prefab will be fired. Next in the Pistol class, create a coroutine function named Bullet Fire that takes a Vector 3 target position as a parameter. This function will handle everything that happens after the bullet is fired. Instantiate the bullet trail prefab at the gun's muzzle with a quaternion identity rotation. Use a while loop to move the bullet trail towards the target. The condition for the while loop checks if the bullet trail is not null and if the distance between the bullet trail's current position and the target is greater than a small threshold. Use yield return null within the loop to pause the function's execution and continue from the last frame on the next update. This prevents the whole while loop from executing in one frame and potentially causing the game to freeze. After the loop ends, destroy the bullet trail game object to prevent unwanted objects from piling up in the scene. In the shoot function, create a vector 3 target. If the raycast hits, set the target to the hit point. Otherwise, set it to the maximum range of the gun. Then call the bullet fire function and pass the target as a parameter. Back in the editor, create an empty game object at the gun's muzzle and name it muzzle. Assign this object to the gun muzzle variable in the pistol script. Create another empty game object named bullet trail prefab and attach a trail renderer component to it. Set the width, duration, color. I'm setting a gradient color here and lastly, set the material for the trail. In the project tab, create a folder named VFX under the resources folder. Drag and drop the bullet trail prefab into this folder, then delete it from the scene. Assign this prefab to the bullet trail prefab variable in the gun data script. Set the bullet speed in the gun data script. For hit surface effects, in the gun class, create two game objects, bullet hole prefab and bullet hit particle prefab. Next in the pistol script, create a new function named bullet hit fx that takes a raycast hit as a parameter. In this function, create a vector 3 named hit position, which will be equal to the hit point plus a small offset in the hit surface's normal direction to prevent overlapping. Instantiate a bullet hole game object at the hit position with the rotation aligned to the hit's normal. Similarly, instantiate a hit particle game object. Set their parent to the hit object so they move with it if it's a moving object. After a short duration, destroy both the bullet hole and the hit particle. Before we call this function in the bullet fire function, first add raycast hit parameter to the bullet fire function so that we can pass it to bullet hit fx function. Then check if the hit dot collider is not null to avoid spawning the effects at incorrect locations. Then get back to the editor and import your photo of the bullet hole. Make it sprite and then create a quad named bullet hole prefab and apply your bullet hole sprite and convert the material to sprite material and then make it prefab by dragging and dropping it in VFX folder. Do the same with the hit particle effect and then lastly provide their references to the pistol script. I would like to add one more thing. You can place the references for the bullet hole prefab and hit particle effect wherever it best suits your game. For example, if these effects are different for each gun, you should keep them in the gun data class. If they are the same for all guns, it's better to place them in the gun class. Alternatively, if you are working on an advanced game where bullet holes depend on the surface they hit, you should use a separate class that holds effects for all surfaces and spawns the appropriate effect. The choice is completely up to you. If you want me to cover all these scenarios, leave a comment below and we'll consider making a tutorial for you. To add a muzzle flash effect, start by modifying the gun class. 
create a variable to hold the muzzle flash game object and a boolean named is shooting, initialized to false. Then create a function named muzzle flash to activate and deactivate the muzzle flash. This function will take a boolean activate as a parameter and will enable or disable the game object accordingly. In the update function, call muzzle flash using is shooting as the parameter. In the handle shoot function, set is shooting to true. Then in the pistol classes update function, check if the fire button is released. And if so, set is shooting to false. In the editor, drag your muzzle flash particle effect under the muzzle game object and disable it initially since the gun won't be shooting at the start. Assign this particle effect to the corresponding variable in the pistol component. I would like to add something here about the muzzle flash. The implementation of the muzzle flash should be relative to the gun type. You can follow different logics for different guns. The current logic is suitable for rapid firing guns, but for a pistol, I recommend using a coroutine that activates the game object for a short duration and then deactivates it automatically. It's best to move this functionality to the specific gun class, such as the pistol class, because it can vary for different guns, allowing you to have tailored logic for each gun script. For pistols and similar guns, it's better to use a quad with a muzzle flash texture applied to it, similar to how we used a texture for bullet holes, instead of using a particle effect. To add a fire sound effect, start by creating an audio clip variable named fire sound in the gun data class. Next in the gun class, create an audio source variable named audio source. In the start function, get the reference of audio source. Then, create a function named play fire sound. In this function, check if both the audio clip and the audio source are not null. If they are valid, play the fire sound using the play one shot function. Finally, call this function within the handle shoot. Then in the editor, provide the fire sound clip to the gun data class and attach audio source component to the pistol and it'll work well. That's it for this video. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Leave a comment below if you have any questions or suggestions for future tutorials. Thanks for watching.